What's going on, conquistadors? It is Scotty the Chunky Spaniard, and welcome back to Round Like Me, the channel where we talk about a lot of well-rounded things. And Happy New Year! 2018 is already here. It has begun. So, hope you watched the last video. What's your plan? And we had a snacking on a Sunday to close out the year. But man, 2018, it's crazy, just craziness. But it is Tuesday, which means it is time for a Tunes on a Tuesday. And as I was kind of thinking about what we were going to do this year, or what I was going to do, I was like, you know what, maybe we start off the year according to the Chinese calendar. And according to the Chinese calendar, because I don't know if you ever, when you went to Chinese restaurants, they have that little placemat and you look for the year you were born. and. Uh, and you're you're hoping you're like the year of the dragon if you're a Bruce Lee fan <laughs> but I was not the year of the dragon I was the year of the snake I don't know what that means slithery snaky I don't know um, but this year 2018 according to the Chinese calendar is the year of the dog more specifically the earth dog or the earthly dog I think it's the earth dog and um, so I was like well why don't we kick off January on our tunes on a Tuesday with bands or artists that have dog in the name and I'm gonna throw some out there that you may not have heard of there are the obvious ones that you can think of instantly Snoop is the first one that you think of I'm pretty sure but today there's an honorable mention the band dog star I think I've mentioned before but they were an alternative band and they had a famous bass player not because he was famous as a bass player, but he may be your favorite actor. He's one of my favorites, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, if you want to go check out Keanu Reeves playing bass, um, go check out Dogstar. They're an alternative band. They sound like pretty much every other alternative band. I went and bought the CD. I remember buying it at a warehouse music on my lunch break one day. Um, excited to see what Keanu had in store, but it wasn't, I mean, there are some faithful, faithful fans, but I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I really tried to like it. Uh, I ended up selling it back <laughs> for money when we got married. When Ashley and I got married, I saw, sent it back. I sold a bunch of CDs back. That was one of them that was in the pile um, that went towards our honeymoon money. So, sorry, Keanu, you're one of my favorite actors, but Dog Star, they were kind of unky. So, but man, I wanted to start off this month on a great, great note. And no pun intended since we're talking about music. So, dog, year of the dog, instantly my brain, you know, being a kid of the 80s and being in college in the late 90s. So what better band to start off with than Temple of the Dog? That's right, Temple of the Dog, that CD is over, right over my shoulder right here. So, Temple of the Dog. Temple of the Dog. This album, seriously. If you don't know the history of this album, let's talk about it. This album came out in April of 1991. Long time ago. I had no clue about it whatsoever. But, the lead singer of Mother Love Bone and another band called Malfunction, they spelled it kind of funky, um, had passed away, had OD'd. And so his bandmates from Mother Love Bone and his roommate, a gentleman by the name of Chris Cornell, decided to come up with an album as a tribute album. So that's where Temple of the Dog came along. I had no idea who they were. I had never heard any of the songs. I didn't even know who was part of it. I had heard of Mother Love Bone because I was a big Pearl Jam fan. And I had heard of Chris Cornell because I was a big Soundgarden fan, but had never heard of Temple of the Dog until I moved from Oregon back to Orange County in my freshman year of college. And they were playing for some reason, because this was 1995 when I moved back to Orange County, and Hunger Strike was in heavy rotation on MTV. And so there was something captivating about these dudes on the beach um, with long hair and the way they sang, both of the singers and just the eclectic outfits of the band. Um, so who's in the band, you might ask? Well, Chris Cornell, Eddie Vedder, okay, Matt Cameron, drummer for Soundgarden, 
then Jeff Ament, bass, Mike McCready, and Stone Gossard, guitars for Pearl Jam. What can you say? Super group. This was a super group. And it wasn't, they didn't set out to be a super group. This was a tribute to one of their friends um, who had passed away. And so, Temple of the Dog and Hunger Strike, and you, you know, like, friggin' Chris Cornell starts off, and you're like, oh, there's that voice. And then all of a sudden, this husky voice comes in. Now, this, which was Eddie Vedder. Now, this came out in April of 91. Bad Motor Finger hadn't come out yet. That didn't come out until the fall of 1991. And 10 by Pearl Jam didn't come out till after this album, I think in August of 91. So this album came out without any, like, they had, an, they had a, a following in Seattle, obviously, the Seattle grunge scene. But they put this album together of amazing songs and put it out before they were really, really huge. Confession time. I'm gonna try and play the intro to Say Hello to Heaven and then another song that was, was really popular off of this album. But um, after the last time I filmed and played guitar, which was when I had to play like Goo Goo Dolls way a few months ago, um, I broke that string trying to do the funky tuning that Johnny Resnick does and it uh, the string broke and gosh man I don't know I let it just get me down and I didn't restring the guitar until today so um, my picking hand is not what it should be because I haven't been practicing so I'm gonna finger pick it and understand the tempo of the dog is all electric stuff it's all electric so you're not gonna get the same tone but you'll get the same idea so say hello to heaven the way that one intros, the guitar riff is so, it, it just takes you right back. It takes you back to grunge days and it makes you think like, oh my gosh, this, it just makes you think like, this is Temple of the Dog. And that, that intro riff goes, drums and Chris Cornell's vocals oh so that song is over six minutes long it is just a great 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 bluesy tune iTunes even classifies this as like the one and only grunge like soul album um, like the first and last soul album of the grunge era but it's just so emotional it's so good then Reach Down, which is 11 minutes long. It's 11-11, I think. And then after that is the song that I found Temple of the Dog with, which was Hunger Strike. And Hunger Strike goes uh, with that riff. Oh, gosh, dude. And I can hear all the parts. <laughs> I don't mind stealing bread from the mouths of decadence. Oh, that, go watch that video. It will take you back to the 90s. And I think it's why I connected with it so much. Because they're in flannels. They're at the beach. It starts off with a lighthouse. And then it ends with a bonfire. Which was a lot of my college days. Was in the evenings, we'd get our skateboards. And go to Laguna, where they have fire pits. And because... California beaches, you can't have a fire unless you have a fire pit in Southern California. And so we'd go to Laguna, load some wood in the back of my truck, have my skateboards, have our acoustic guitars, skate in the parking lot until sun went down. Then we'd take our acoustic guitars and play and jam around a bonfire and watch the waves. And that was a lot of college for me. <laughs> so I connect with the song even more. But Gosh, man, with Hunger Strike, you have the interplay of Chris Cornell's vocals and Eddie Vedder's vocals. Chris Cornell's the main vocalist on Temple of the Dog, but Eddie Vedder comes in, and you're just like, who is this burly man with his voice that you could pretty much understand in these songs? Um, and then each instrument gets its time to shine. Matt Cameron is so smooth with his traditional grip on the sticks, and 
it's just so clean and sharp. And then Jeff Ammett, he's draft, dressed the you know he's dressed in his very eclectic way. He's got his funky hat and jacket on. And then Mike McCready and Stone Gossard both get moments to shine, and you can totally you hear that tone, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's what I love from Ten, from Pearl Jam, and it's there. And so, um, yeah, let's let's talk about the rest of the album. I'm gonna set this down, then we're gonna talk about the rest of the album. So as I said, this album came out in April of '91. And after Hunger Strike, it had Pushing Forward Back, which has that super, like, what you'd expect from Soundgarden, the odd time signature, which is a great rocker. Call Me a Dog, which is a total blues, just mellow blues tune. Um, Times of Trouble, Wooden Jesus, Your Savior, Four Walled World, All Night Thing. And if you get the updated version, the deluxe version that came out in 2016 of this, you get a bunch of the demos of the songs, and if you're a fan of Soundgarden and you're a fan of Pearl Jam, you're going to be a fan of this album. It's really, really good. Now, there are some more mellow tunes that you're not going to get as shredding of songs as you did in early Soundgarden, and if you're looking for stuff off of 10, you can tell the tones there, but it's not the same sound as 10. But Temple of the Dog, such a good album. This is this is this is one that everyone needs to have in their collection, especially if you're an alternative or grunge rock fan. This is a great one, and it was done with, you know, a, a good good meaning behind it to honor a friend. So what did we talk about today? We talked about Dogstar. Gave them a little honorable mention just because it's Keanu. I mean, Keanu's the man. You know he is. Ever since Bill and Ted's, all the way to John Wick. Gosh, whew. Man, and I've heard rumors that he is immortal, so that makes him even cooler. Um, so Dogstar, if you want to check out an alternative band, that sounds like a lot of alternative bands, but you might you might like them. There are a lot of alternative bands that I like that sounded like a lot of other bands that I really, really enjoyed. And then Temple of the Dog. Since it's Year of the Dog, Dogstar, Temple of the Dog. Temple of the Dog, you gotta go get it. Tribute to the lead singer of Mother Love Bone, okay? And, um, and Malfunction. And it's got Chris Cornell, who, favorite vocalist of all time. I had to hold off on this because everything was so fresh with him. And that's why I also haven't mentioned anything Linkin Park is because of Chester. And thought it was time to just start peeling back some of those layers. And uh, so Chris Cornell, Matt Cameron from Soundgarden, and then pretty much the rest of Pearl Jam, <laughs> except their drummer, um, all on this album. It's a great album. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. So if you're new, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming and checking out the channel. Um, if you were one of the longtime loyals, you're the best. Thank you so much. So that's it. Tunes on Tuesday. That's all for today. We're going to move on. I'll see you Thursday with a new video. There's going to be another snacking on a Sunday. I know I usually don't back those up, but we're going to do another snacking on a Sunday on Sunday with my kids. And then we'll see where this, where, where the, the dog leads us. Okay, we're not walking the dog. The dog's walking us this month with the music in the year of the dog. So remember, conquistadors, be a better person tomorrow than you were today. And I'll see you next time on Round Like Me with Scotty the Chunky Spaniard. Be good people. And I'll see you Thursday. Take care. Bye.